Uh, this is a presentation in a in a session about vitamins and vitamins in the ICU, uh, and obviously, based off of the title, I'm going to talk about vitamin D. The um, the kind of short, brief story of vitamin D is is that we've had a number of studies that have shown that low levels of vitamin D are associated with worse outcomes, including needing to be into the ICU more, uh, having more uh, infections. Uh, and needing the ICU and uh, staying in the ICU longer, having higher mortality while you're in the ICU. And so the thought process was is that uh, repleting people's love vitamin D to normal levels may prevent some of these bad outcomes. And, um, you know, we've tried this in a number of trials uh, and we haven't had great success in improving outcomes by giving patients vitamin D. And, you know, the question then becomes, why is that the case? Is it that low vitamin D level is not the reason that people do worse? It's just kind of associated with being sick and doing worse? Or uh, is there something about the vitamin D metabolism and vitamin D absorption that we don't yet understand? So we're not really supplementing it right. We're not really targeting the right levels, those sorts of things. And I think we're still working to figure that out. Uh, vitamin D has a number of kind of positive effects in the body. Uh, obviously, it's involved in bone metabolism. That's probably not that relevant in critical illness. Uh, but it's very, very, very much involved in the immune system. And it's sort of a cofactor for our immune cells in uh, fighting infection. And uh, it's been shown in a number of other studies, not in the ICU, that low vitamin D levels result in less robust immune systems, more prone to get infections, um, and um, uh, worse outcomes. Uh, the other effects of it are that it seems to have some anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, we don't entirely understand exactly how it decreases inflammation, but it seems to decrease inflammation um, and um, um, also kind of uh, has some effects on the, the lining, the endothelial lining of the lungs and the, and the vasculature. So all of those effects kind of together are pleiotropic in the fact that they sort of um, uh, grow these areas, stimulate these areas, uh, and are beneficial uh, to the body in that regard. Um, 